There is new concern about the safety of a group of killer whales in the Pacific Northwest. The Navy plans to conduct tests in the region, and animal advocates warn these endangered orcas could be harmed. CBS News meteorologist and climate specialist Jeff Berardelli reports. It makes me feel heartbroken hearing or seeing a whale be harmed. 10-year-old Ella Grace, better known as Ella Saves the Ocean to her thousands of social media followers, is on a mission to save the whales. Whales aren't these mindless animals that have no clue what they're doing. They are highly intelligent. They live in a pod with their family for their entire life. They hunt together, they work together, and to hear that whales being harmed, it's upsetting. The reason why Ella is worried is because the U.S. Navy recently requested an authorization from NOAA Fisheries, asking for 51 takes per year of orcas in the Pacific Northwest. Now, in this context, the meaning of take or incidental take is to unintentionally disturb, harass, or harm a marine mammal. These authorizations are required under the Marine Mammal Protection Act for activities that produce disruptive underwater sound, like energy exploration, construction, and even scientific research. They're not saying that they're gonna purposely kill 51 whales, but they are saying that their activities may harm 51 times for 51 individuals. For Dr. Deborah Giles, the loss of even one orca is devastating. For the past decade, her passion at the University of Washington involves tracking one very small but very special community of killer whales called the Southern Residents. When they were listed as endangered in 2005, there were 88. But recently, their numbers have declined to 72. Every threat that is facing them has been caused by us. The recent drop in population can be blamed on a number of things, including a decline in their primary food source, Chinook salmon. That's partly due to overfishing, but we're also seeing a buildup of harmful toxins in the water, an increase in ship traffic, and warming waters due to climate change. Essentially, all of this population is in a state of, of hunger. And even still, they still cooperatively hunt and share food literally sharing one salmon, taking a bite and passing what's left to a family member. Orcas share a compassionate and cultural bond with each other, a connection which in many ways mimics our own human relationships. In fact, their lifespans even mirror that of humans, some living to 90 years old. They're just an incredibly easy population of animals to fall in love with. The southern residents are some of the most well-studied animals on the planet spending most of their time in the Pacific Northwest, traveling as far south as Monterey, California, and as far north as southeast Alaska. But the Navy inevitably crosses paths with these orcas from time to time during training and testing activities. And since the whales use sound waves to navigate, communicate, and hunt, it makes them particularly sensitive to Navy acoustics, from sonar to sonic booms. Sound carries better in water than it does in the air, and very loud explosions, like thousand pound explosions, uh, can have the impact, a physical impact on the, on the body of a, of a killer whale. This video from 2003 was captured by the Center for Whale Research in the Salish Sea near Seattle. Using a hydrophone underwater and a video camera up above, they simultaneously caught the screeching Navy sonar down below, and the disturbed and erratic behavior of the southern residents at the surface. Dr. Giles says intense underwater sound like this can compromise the orca's ability to forage or communicate with one another, a foundation for their family's survival. So Giles' organization, Wild Orca, along with 28 others, including the Seattle Aquarium, wrote a letter to NOAA Fisheries expressing their concern. The controversy revolves around a term which NOAA uses called negligible impact. Since NOAA estimates there are about 50,000 killer whales worldwide, 51 takes may seem negligible. But these organizations argue that since the 72 southern residents are unique from other orcas, any extra pressure on their diminishing populations is not negligible.
and they're distinct genetically and culturally. If this population is lost, it's the equivalent of, of losing a unique tribe of individual humans. So to avoid this possibility, the 29 organizations are asking NOAA Fisheries to change their determination of negligible impact and require an extra layer of protection. Dr. Giles says more needs to be done to track and monitor the orcas. I'm not saying that the Navy doesn't need to engage in their practice and trainings uh, of the activities that they engage in, but doing it in a, in a more responsible way and with better guidelines, I think, is, is very much in order. While they did not commit to additional measures, in an email to CBS News, the Navy said it plans to include numerous efforts to avoid or minimize potential effects on the species throughout the region. It emphasized that all 51 takes are of the lowest level, claiming activities should only cause temporary changes to their vocal, swimming, and foraging behavior. Adding, quote, the Navy is not anticipating any southern resident killer whale injuries or mortalities from these activities. But Dr. Giles doesn't quite see it that way. She believes these encounters could be dangerous and cause long-term impacts, a risk she feels is not worth taking. Just the loss of one whale or the harm to one whale could have population level impacts. NOAA Fisheries says it's targeting November 2020 for a final decision. If I was to be asked right now as of today, what do I think their, their answer is going to be? I think they're edging towards approving this, this permit request. What do you hope comes of your effort to save these whales? I hope that the Navy can reconsider where they're going to be doing it and what they're doing. So they're not endangering the lives of animals. Jeff Berardelli, CBS News.